I want to speak today from the subject, settled faith. Settled faith. My personal observation and conclusions uh, about this pandemic is that it exposed those who were unsettled. The pandemic has exposed people who were unsettled. It exposed people who were unsettled in their jobs and their careers. People realized, I don't want to do this anymore. I didn't like this job anyway. And now that I've been home from it, I really realize I don't like this job. So it exposed people unsettled in their jobs. It ex exposed people who were unsettled in their careers. Their careers. I want to do something entirely different. I don't even want a corporate job anymore. I don't want to be an entrepreneur anymore. I don't want this. Exposed people. And it also unsettled people who were unsettled in their marriages. Some people said, I've been putting up with this a long time. I'm not putting up with this anymore. Uh, I, I, I can't do this anymore. So it, 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 it exposed people unsettled. But even more than jobs and careers and unfortunately even marriages, most of all, what has bothered me is that there are people that it exposed, they were unsettled in their faith. Jobs can come and go. Careers can come and go. Unfortunately, in today's society, even relationships and husbands and wives come and go. But if there's anything that's going to take you through all the vicissitudes, ups and downs, peaks and valleys of all these other things, it's going to be your faith. You have to get to the point that you're settled in your faith. What you believe and who you believe. To be settled is to be resolved. Some might say I'm resolved. Okay? When we, we, uh, we, we make resolutions and, we, and part of resolutions is to say be it finally resolved. Let this be the final word on this matter. Be resolved uh, to to uh, you know. I was, I was explaining to my son, my son Tyler, who's an attorney, and sometimes handles personal injury cases. And uh, I told he was talking about we were, we were talking about sometimes that there's some clients who who they had an accident last month, and they think they're supposed to have two hundred thousand dollars this month. And I said, son, I said some of the people, I said they don't. I said all they know is that they looked on television. And somebody said, I called so-and-so, and I got $300,000, okay? I got five, and they're not showing you that they're sitting in a wheelchair and they're paraplegic. Your toe got run over. And then I explained to him, I said, sometimes, son, I said, it may be good to explain, because we did this when I was a claims adjuster, okay? And I did this to try to keep control my case to where I could resolve this with people without them getting attorneys. And I'll explain them from the beginning. This is how this is going to work. I'm going to collect your data. I'm going to collect medical evidence. But when you're at a place of maximum medical improvement, we're going to sit down. We're going to look at all your bills and data. And I, and I explained to them how the process worked so they wouldn't be expecting a check tomorrow. And depending on the injury, they said, this may not be settled until a year from now or two years from now. And so when it's settled, we have reached a conclusion. This is resolved. This is it. There is no more. And then you sign a release saying that you understand this and there's no further litigation, no further claims to be made. It is settled. It's resolved. To be settled is to reach a conclusion about an argument or a problem or even a dilemma. To be settled is to be determined and decided upon. And if there's anything that we need to be resolved in to reach our conclusion and settle our arguments about and be determined and decided upon is what we believe. Otherwise, the circumstances of life will always have you questioning what you believe. Somebody new and charismatic with a thunderous voice may have you questioning what you believe. Somebody who seems to be pop 
popular with the masses will have you questioning what you believe. But when you are settled in faith, you know that you know that you know what and who you believe. Paul expressed settled faith like this. Paul said in 2 Timothy, look at 2 Timothy 1 and 12. This is Paul expressing what it means to be settled in faith. Paul says this to Timothy, 2 Timothy 1 and 2. He says, for the, for the which cause I suffer all these things. He said, I'm going through a lot of stuff and there's situations and trials and ups and downs and peaks and valleys. I go, nevertheless, I'm not ashamed. I'm not embarrassed about what I'm going through as a Christian. Come on, let, we can stop right there. Some people get embarrassed because I'm a Christian and my family going through this. I'm a Christian and my marriage is having problems. I'm a Christian and my child is living so rebellious. I'm a Christian and my finances are up and down. I'm a Christian and I've been attacked in my body. Paul said, I ain't ashamed. <laughs> I'm not ashamed about my circumstances. My circumstances don't determine my God. My circumstances don't change what I know and what I believe about God. I'm not ashamed. Here we go. Why am I not ashamed? For I know whom I have believed. A lot of people misquote this scripture and they say, I know in whom I believe. Paul didn't say, I know in whom I believe. He said, I know whom I believe. I am intimately acquainted with the person in whom I put my trust. Let me say that again. Paul said, I am intimately acquainted with the person in whom I've put my trust when he says, I know in whom I believe. In other words, somebody picked it up, an old song of the church, and said, you can't make me doubt them because I know too much about them. You ever have somebody come and tell you something about somebody, and you said, and, and, no, and said no, but, but, uh, I don't believe that. Well, they said, no, I don't, you must have misheard something. Or you saw, uh, no, you saw somebody else. I know that person. They wouldn't be there. They would not have said that. Okay? Because you feel I know too much about them that, well, I said, oh, this is so good. And because I know them, I can pretty much predict their behavior. Because I know them, I know their character. Paul said, I know whom I believe and am persuaded because I'm intimately acquainted with the person I put my trust in. I am persuaded. Persuaded me I have gone as far as I can go to the point of absolute faith and trust. See, some of you are in the process of being persuaded. I'm growing in my faith towards God. I'm, I'm, uh, I, I, I think I'm going all the way. Okay? If this works out, Paul said, I am persuaded. To be persuaded means to be fully and thoroughly convinced. I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I committed unto him against that day. Let me make this example. He said, I'm persuaded that no matter what comes in life, God's going to be the same. I'm persuaded that I can trust him when I can't trust politicians, when I can't trust the economy, when I can't trust people. Da David even came to realize that because the people you ought to be able to put your most trust in, who you first learned from a child, your mother and your father, David said, I've been living long enough to know this, that even when my mother and my father forsake me, the Lord's going to be there to take me up. You got to get to that place that if everybody else leaves and everybody else goes and nobody else is dependable, I will trust in the Lord until I die. David expressed settled faith like this. Psalm 57 and verse 7. David says, my heart is fixed, oh God. He says, he said, they said, let me say a little louder for the people in the back. My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. My heart is fixed 
that I will praise the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Circumstances up, circumstances down, people dependable, people independable, people trustworthy, people untrustworthy, but I will bless the Lord. My heart is fixed. I know who I believe. My faith is settled. I will be a permanent praiser for the rest of my days. I'll give him praise. Come on, somebody shout that. For the rest of my days, I'll give him praise. He's talking about being settled, being settled, being settled, being settled, being settled. Settle faith. I'm not growing in my trust towards God. I trust God. I'm not growing in my belief toward God anymore. I believe God. <laughs> Are you here? See, when you get when you get to that place, you know, no matter what I go through, God gonna be God. I wish I wasn't going through this, but I know I'm gonna have victory. I wish that I have to have to fight this fight, but I'm gonna fight the good fight of faith, and I will lay hold of eternal life. I wish I didn't have to go through this, but by this I know that thou phrases me because I'm fighting and the enemy has not triumphed over me. The fact that I'm still in the fight means that it ain't over. Oh my God, that was good for somebody right there. The fact that you're still in this fight, it means that the devil realizes you are not defeated. Because if the fight was over, you'd be laying on the floor. He would have knocked you out. The fact that you're still fighting means the devil hasn't won. Somebody shout, the devil hasn't won. The text and the context of the text. The three Hebrew boys, they were young men in exile to Babylon, taken there as exiles, as slaves, and various ones were put in various places and various assignments. And these three by the Hebrew name Han Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. They were given Babylonian names, and those Babylonian names were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, not a bad Negro. Okay. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. From the very beginning, they were settled in their faith. First of all, when you slaves, you don't get a menu. You don't get a la carte. Sir, what would you like to eat tonight? Every now and then, every now and then, I'll be, you know, uh, you, you really, you got to be like flying like 10 hours to get a meal on the plane today. There was a time if, you, if it was like two, you might, especially in first class. So if those of you say, I want to get first class, so I get a meal, you better fly overseas. All you get is a bigger seat <laughs> and you get two bags of peanuts <laughs> and maybe a cookie. <laughs> they get one in the back or nothing. Um, but, but every now and then I'm in a plane, maybe flying from here to New York, and they say, well, sir, would you like it? Can I get you anything? I say, yeah, I, I'll have the filet medium well and lobster. And then we bust out laughing because you know you ain't getting that here. Okay. Sometime I, we, we do, you know, if you're real hungry, you get fast food and ride up to a Bojangles or something like that, or up to a Russian. And I, and I say, do y'all have anything healthy here? <laughs> and, and people quick, no, no, you, you're at the wrong place. You don't get a, a menu of what's healthy. You don't get a menu of your favorite meal. You take what's before you. And when they saw the first meal, they said, can we make a deal here? We are Hebrews. We have a diet that our God has given us. And we ask you that we don't want to defile ourselves, defile this temple with the king's meat. Can you just give us some water and some bread? They said, no, we can't do that, because if you do that, you, you're going to be looking weak, and you're not going to be a good slave. They said, listen, now just come on, just come on back. If we look unhealthy then, then we'll, we'll have to work out something else. But they came back and they found that they were just as strong 
as those that was eating pig feet and pork chops and bacon and sausage. Let me stop for y'all making mad mass exits out of here. Don't be messing with me, preacher. I didn't eat breakfast yet. But they said from the beginning, we're not going to eat the king's meat. And they were amazed that when they had convictions that, that I'm going to do what God requires of me, God took care of them. Oh, my God. I want y'all to get so settled in your faith that you really realize if I do what God requires of me, God will take care of me. Pastor Trey, when he was my adjutant, particularly in those early days, I didn't even know his schedule. I would be traveling out of town, going to Greensboro, North Carolina, where Pastor Marsh is this morning, ministering at Evangel for, for the Lockets. Um, travel out of town, go to Charleston, go to Jacksonville, and he would drive me. And sometimes, he, we would always make arrangements, but uh, Bishop, well, I wasn't Bishop, that you want to come back tonight or we're going to stay over. And depending on what I told him, he would make arrangements. Well, I didn't know a lot of those night trips, a lot of those uh, where we would, I would go down to preach in Charleston, go to uh, someplace and come back the same night, we would get back at 2 o'clock in the morning that he was up at 4 o'clock to go to work. He never said to me, Bishop, I can't do this. I think he had a right to. But he was persuaded that if I serve my pastor, God going to take care of me. He would miss, he would miss, uh, uh, class example, uh, he's part of a real estate, national real estate, whatever, he has real estate mentors and all that, and they were having a big national real estate conference last year. But it was right in the midst of direction conference. And his real estate mentor said, well, listen, you, if you need to be here, he said, no, I can't do it. He said, I have something at my church. He couldn't understand that. He can, he can, he can understand. He said, no, 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 no. I, no, I, I'm, I'm going to be at this conference. Convinced that if I take care of God's business, he's going to handle my business. Convinced that when I'm serving my man of God and serving ministry, God will make up for whatever I could not do in my own strength. See, you don't operate like that unless you get settled. As long as you're thinking, I'm going to miss out. You always compromise the things of God until you get settled that if I put God first, if I really do what the scripture tells me to do in Matthew 6, that if I seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these things that the other people are misthinking and missing out and can't put spiritual things first and can't come to church and got to do this and that. All those things will be added to me while they're trying to bring them to them. Somebody say settle faith. So in the context, it's Hebrew boys were settled in their faith. And now they have another test. The test is that when you hear the music, you bow down to this golden image and worship the golden image, which another word for that is what? Idol that the king has made. And when they, they brought all the slaves before them, they played the music and everybody bowed. Imagine, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands. And everybody bowed. You know how you're the only one standing up in church. Everybody eyes on you. Everybody else is bowed except these three. And somebody said, you need to get down. And I said, no, no, we, we, don't, we don't bow to false gods. We don't go along with the crowd. We're willing to be different. We're willing to stand out. I am sanctified. I'm called out. I'm chosen. I'm a royal priesthood. I'm a holy nation. I'm a, I'm a peculiar people. I know you don't understand, but I'm settled 
that this is what I do and this is what I don't do, no matter who's around or what the pressure is. I'm talking about being settled in faith. So now they threaten them. They said, now we're going to tell you one last time. You either bow down to this image or you will be thrown into the fiery furnace. And now we pick it up here in the text from Daniel, the third chapter, starting at verse 16. The first thing they said uh, is that we are not careful to answer you in this matter. Now, I, I really believe they said that with a lot of respect, but I don't know how much respect you can say this with. But let me give you, you can interpret many ways. We ain't scared to give you the same answer we gave you before. We ain't bowing. We are not careful. We are not worried about the consequences. We are not careful. We're not full of care about what you say you're going to do to us. The word careful means full of care. We're not worried about the consequences. Somebody say, I'm not worried about the consequences because I'm settled in faith. In other, you know, in order for you to go undergo surgery, you got to believe it's going to be worth the cut. In order for you to go take the vaccine, you got to believe it's going to be worth the punch, the pinch. I really, I got to go through this to get to that. So I ain't worried about this because what I'm after is going to yield lasting results. And some people are too concerned about what they're going through that they forfeit what they're going to. They say, we're not careful, we're not worried, we're not concerned. When you are settled in faith, when you have settled faith, there are certain things you don't worry about. I know it's going to be all right. I know God's going to take care of me. I know I'm going to get through with this. I know on the other side of this is victory. Pastor Marcia, a couple of weeks ago, she, on Good Friday, she went to her cousin's home going down in Savannah, and I watched online. I know the pastor. I told him my wife to come and treat her good. And um, so she was, she was on the program to do the prayer. And, but I watched, and the pastor in his discourse or in his eulogy told a story, he said, I remember a particular man in our church, he said he was a good man. He said, I got a call, it was an emergency call. He said, and the brother said, Pastor, I'm getting ready to go into surgery. I'm getting ready to go into surgery, and I got a feeling I ain't going to make it. And Pastor go tell the story, and he didn't make it. And the pastor went on to say that it was his time and God's appointed time. I said, no, he said that. Yeah. I text Pastor Marshall. I said, he sealed that. And now, if I'm going to call you, I'm going to say, listen, let's get in agreement. I'm going to make it. Yeah. Ain't no, I ain't calling you to tell you I ain't going to make it. You got to get settled. I'm going in, but I'm coming out. I'm going through, but I'm coming forth. Oh, my God. When he's tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Settled. Listen, we ain't concerned. Do what you got to do. We, we don't think your threats are hollow. We know you. We've seen you kill other people. Secondly, they said something else. Verse 17 Put a verse 17 for me. Verse 17. They said, if it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver. But let's stop. If it be so, if it be so, that's a reference to the will of God. If it's the will of God, he's going to deliver us. 
Look at somebody and say, it is God's will to deliver you. Come on, look at somebody else. Say, it is God's will to deliver you. Well, what makes you say that? Because I read in another place that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but he delivers us out of them all. It is God's will to, be, to deliver you because I heard David say, I once was young and now I'm old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. I know it's the will of God to, to deliver me because he said when you go through the waters, they will not overflow you. And when you go through the fire, your hair will not be sin. It is the will of God to deliver me. You got to get it settled that no matter what I go through, it's God's will to deliver for me and because the way that he's going to get glory is that he delivers me the way that I'm going to praise is that he delivers me the way I'm going to share this testimony is that he delivers me the way my children are going to know that he's a good God is because he will deliver me somebody shout he will deliver me let's see if it be so he's going to deliver us you got to know it's the will of God. When you're set on faith, you know it's the will of God to deliver you. And then it come, put it back up. And it, if it be the will of God, if it be so, our God whom we serve, then he said another, he is able to deliver us. Somebody say, God is able. God is Pastor Marshall preached a message, I guess back in February, God is able. It's been running on TV for the last two weeks. I saw the, the, the beginning of it today. God, God is able. He said, God is able to deliver us. Okay? We're not worried. We believe the will of God. And we know God is able. Settled. God is able. The Hebrew boys were settled on the fact that God has no shortage of power and might. They were settled that God is omnipotent, omni, all potent power. God has all power. That God has all power. All my, that God is El Shaddai, which means the Almighty God who can do anything. They were settled that God is able. Do you realize there is nothing that you can go through that is beyond God's ability? to deliver you. There is nothing you can go through that's beyond God's ability to bring you out of. There is nothing you can go through that is beyond God's ability to turn around. Somebody say, God's about to turn this thing around. Oh my God, it, it's, it's never too far gone for his ability. He's omnipotent. The God who we serve is able. Y'all remember, see, you got to get it settled that he's able. Now, some of, I know we all say, I always say, always say, oh, yeah, I know he's able. I know, I know he's able. Don't you know God able? He's able. No, yeah, all right. <laughs> well, why as soon as you hear something, you lose it like a sinner who don't know Jesus? When you hear that that job is going to lay off. When the doctors have given you a negative report and you go into funeral preparation mode, do you really believe he's able? Now, ain't nothing wrong with going into funeral preparation mode, okay, because, you know, people need to have stuff together so it won't cause a lot of drama for people. I keep, I keep supposed to be buying me and Pastor Marcia some mausoleum. I'm supposed to do it. I keep riding by there. I ride in, this, I ride in there and say, go talk to him. Then I ride right back out. They keep telling me it's cheaper. But I don't make decisions based upon finances. <laughs> I'm financially independent. Nothing wrong with doing that, but I'm talking about out of fear that that is the final word. Man never has the final say. Man never has the final say. 
Thank God for our doctors and thank God for our attorneys. Thank God for the legal system. Thank God for the political system. Thank God. But that is not the final say. The person gave me the testimony of the compensation coming forth from three, four years. They said the person called him and said, mm, the judge saw it your way. I said, well, I, said I, I was really surprised. Uh, and they said, yeah. I said, said I was said, God, God's good. And the, and the person said, yeah, well, whatever. See, it, it don't matter if they believe God. It's whether you believe God. Sometimes you got to tell people, can you just shut up? I believe God. You remember Paul's on the ship in Acts 27? Everybody's panicking. Paul said, I just want y'all to know something. I believe God. All the rest of y'all think we're going to die? The hundreds of you? But I believe God. I don't care in the midst of every situation. God just needs one person to believe him and everybody else can be saved in your family and spared in your family because of your faith. Somebody got to get it settled that God is able. When we get as we get ready, to, we've originally supposed to be moving forward and breaking ground in 2020. Pandemic hits. Bank calls me and says, uh, "Mr. Bailey, we got, we're just gonna put everything on hold. Uh, we, we're not gonna we're not saying it's a red light. It's just a bright yellow light. <laughs> we're just gonna slow this whole thing down and." And let's see, we don't know what this pandemic, let's see, let's see what the, what the, how the bank, the, what, how the economy does, and we're going to see how the bank does, and then we're going to check and see how the church is doing. And I told him, I said, well, I said, uh, I'll be praying for the bank and praying for the economy. I said, but as for right direction, we're going to be all right. I got to settle. You know, one of the things, I know, I, I know, I know some of y'all get tired of me telling that. I know you some get tired. But one of the things I go back to is that I started with nothing. And I see everything God did from nothing. And we're a long way from nothing now. If God did that with nothing, what can he still do with something? Oh, come on now. Come on now. You so far from where you started and you still don't believe God? The same God that brought you this far didn't just bring you this far to bring you this far. Oh my God. He's already done too much for you that by now you ought to have it settled. I've come this far by faith and I'm going further by faith. Look at somebody say, we're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. Get it settled. Get it settled. We're going to be all right. The economy going to go up. The economy going to go down. And banks not going to know what they're going to do. But we're going to be all right because I am settled that I believe God. Got to get it settled. Fully persuaded. Remember, remember the father of the lunatic boy? He wasn't settled in his faith. He comes to Jesus asking Jesus to do something about the boy, according to Mark 9, they brought the boy to Jesus after he had been to Jesus' disciples, and they were not able to cast the spirit out of him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit, when, when the spirit in the boy saw Jesus, it started acting up. It started beginning to tear him, and he fell to the ground, wallow foaming. Some of us would say, uh, this time... I didn't sign up for all this. Now I'll feed 5,000, but I ain't messed with no demons. The boy, he wallowed and started foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked the father, how long, how long you been dealing with this? Oh my God. How long ago since this came to him? That's a question for some of you. How long you been dealing with that? Without taking authority. When did that first start happening? And you just kept letting it happen. Remember the prodigal son? He began to be in want. He wasn't in want overnight. That was a process. He let that thing go on too long. That stuff we going through, 
that you just letting go on too long. You got to take your authority from the beginning. You got to see that demon raise his oh, oh, nah, ah, Hey! Now we ain't have that up in here. That lack demon. Oh, hey! Lack is in my past. Uh, 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 what? what? I, got, I got healed. Some of you heard me, heard me talk about I was on the organ back in, with Bishop Bailey. And I, I didn't know what it was at the time. Now I know what it is. Okay? I don't know. And I had, I was, I'm, I'm like 20 years old, something like that. And I had this severe burning and pain in my arches of my feet. I don't know what it was. And, and Bishop Bailey is up preaching stocks one day. He said, there's somebody here got this burning pain in your arches. He said, come here and he pray for you. And I got right off the organ because we're overusing word of knowledge like that. And he prayed for me, and I got healed instantly. I had been dealing with that for months. I had been dealing, I got healed of that instantly. How? Instantly. About two years ago, I started having pain in these arches. I remember, hey, hey, devil, I got healed of this 35 years ago. Now, you are lying. I am not dealing with this anymore. I could have, no, no, I didn't say, oh, Lord, now I got a name for it because I've been a claim to just, I know all these conditions now. I got plantar fasciitis. I got swollen ligaments in my Pedotos, my metatos or pedotos, whatever this is. Okay. No, no, no. I, no, I said, oh, no, 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 I'm healed of this. Okay? I, I'm healed. I'm, I'm not dealing with this anymore. And, and I lasted for about a week. And I ain't had no more problems with it. You have to know where God brought you from and realize it wasn't a fluke. When God did it before, it wasn't a fluke. The devil tried to raise that thing up and say, oh, yeah, you thought you was out of lack. You thought God healed you that. Oh, you, you thought you was over that depression. And he tried, oh, no, 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 no. How long you been dealing with this? How long have you let this reoccur? Why do you keep letting this do this without you taking your authority? How long ago has it been since this came to him? And the man said, of a child, which means now he's either a grown man or at least an older Adolescent, he said, since a young child, he said, and th this is this is worse than this. I know as bad as you see, it gets worse than this because oftentimes it casts him into the fire and often into the waters. What one translator said, he was a lunatic. When we think of lunatic, we see somebody in their mind. I would say he wasn't too, he wasn't too lunatical <laughs> because he went to the fire. Then, then he ran to the water. He knew that I have to get this fire, I need to get, find me some water. Sometimes folks ain't as crazy as you think they are. Throws into the fire, then he goes into the water, and he tries to destroy it. And then, and then he, 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 here's what I'm going to get to. Then he says, Gee, but if you can, if you can do anything, this is not what the, what the Hebrew boys, the Hebrew boys say, God is able. Their faith is, this man's faith is not settled. He's still wavering in it. If, if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Don't you put this on me. Put your faith in gear. It's, there's no lack in my ability. If there's a lack, is lacking your faith. There is no unsettledness, variableness, shakiness, ambiguity in my ability. All of that is on your part. If you get it settled in faith, you can have it. If thou canst believe. So settled faith, y'all, has absolute confidence in God's ability to perform. Come on, say that. Say, I have absolute confidence in God's ability to perform. This is one of my favorite scriptures. Psalm 57 and 2. Psalm 57 and 2 says, I will cry unto God most high, unto God, would you read the last part with me? That performeth all things for me. Let's try it again. I want you to read the last part. Of I will cry unto God most high, unto God what? That performeth 
It's a couple of things that we all love, love about the scripture. It says that God can perform all things. But then he makes it personal. God performeth all things for me. Look at somebody say, he loves me like that. That's something else you got to get settled in. You got to get fed that what God has done for somebody else, he will do for you. Hey, I see what he did in Bailey, what he did for Bishop and, and Pastor Marcel. And I see how he, he allowed them to put their, their children through college. And, and see, and y'all, the reason why, the reason why I, I, I go with my story is because, uh, because I don't want y'all thinking that God has just done things for me just because I'm a preacher. He's done what he's done in my life, in part, number one, because of his grace, but also in part because of my obedience and my faith. I had to believe him to do it. Everybody's given the measure of faith. It's all matter what you're going to target, target it towards. Are y'all with me here? I just obeyed what God told me to do. What's he told you to do? Prosperity is in what he tells you to do. Healing is in what he tells you to do. Lack reversal is in what he tells you to do. Increase comes from what he tells you to do. If you get anything from my story, get the fact that I did what he told me to do when it looked scary to do it, when it didn't make sense to do it, when religious so-called spiritual people told me it didn't make any sense to do it, I believe I heard God and did what he told me to do. Glory to God. Got to get it settled. I'll cry unto God that performs all things for me. You got to just know not, not God's a performer, not that he just has ability, but his ability will work for me. He's able to do it for me. Say it with me. He's able to do it. Say it again. He's able to do it for me. Let the devil hear you. He's able to do it for me. You got to know he's able to do it for you. Not just to the preacher on television. Not just for Oprah. Are y'all listening to me? And, and, you know, there, I told you, generally speaking, it's sometimes the same principles. Any, many times, any people who are successful in, in endeavors, with, with the exception of people who just inherited something, somebody gave it to them, without even recognizing sometimes they was exercising faith. They call it higher power, just uh, uh, believe in something beyond what you're able to see, going against the crowd, doing, going against conventional wisdom. Faith is necessary to go from one level to the next. So settled faith is absolute confidence in God's ability. Isaiah 59 and 1. Settled faith is absolute confidence in God's ability. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened. That it cannot save. And I, I, I just saw this here. Because I, I, at first I kept, I, I looked for the scripture, uh, God's arm is not short. And you know, you know how you know the scripture. I kept looking, arm short, short arm. I couldn't find the short arm scripture. I kept saying, I know Zid here somewhere about his arm ain't short. You don't have a short arm. And then I finally found what the scripture said. Behold, the hand of the Lord is not shortened, which tells me, he's saying, it's just as long now as it was when he created the world. <laughs> God's hand has not shrunk. He doesn't have atrophy. Y'all aren't hearing me here. It is just as long towards you as it was towards the children of Israel coming out, the, out of Egypt when he parted the Red Sea. God's arm, God's hand is not shortened. It's still as powerful. It's still as long. It still can reach into your situation and into your life that it cannot save, that God, God, still, you know, God still has the same power to deliver you that he used to deliver the children of Israel when they came out of the Red Sea. It's the same hand. It's the same powerful hand. It's just as long, just as powerful, and it don't even reach beyond thousands of years to bless you. Nor his ear heavy that he cannot hear. He's not dull of hearing. You have to be, have absolute confidence in God's ability. Jeremiah 32 and 17, I'm still talking about, I'm talking about the, the, the three Hebrew boys said, and God's able to deliver us. They have absolute confidence in God's ability. Jeremiah 30, 32, 17, our Lord, behold, thou hast made the heaven 
in the earth by thy great power and stretch out on and there is nothing too hard for thee. Every time you think something too hard, just look up. God made all this. There ain't nothing too hard for him. Look at the moon at night. God, God did that. There's nothing too hard. Look at the star. God did that. There's nothing. Do, do y'all realize? Do y'all something you don't realize? Okay. I get fast uh, uh, Almost when I talk about it, I get, get a little traumatic uh, uh, stress here. But uh, she keeps telling me she won't walk across the dam. And I said, uh, I'll walk one way, but meet me with the car on the other side. Because if you walk one way, you got to walk back. But a lot of us don't realize Lake Murray is one of the largest lakes in the country. It's man-made. Some of y'all don't catch that. That's a man-made lake that still is not to be compared with the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean and the Indian Ocean and those other oceans. I'm trying to remember my geography. It's two more, right? The Ant uh -uh. The Arctic Ocean, that's all of them. Okay, so y'all don't remember either. <laughs> all y'all gonna fail SAT. It's a good thing that they stopped making you take it now. But it's a man-made lake, and it's vast, and it's man-made. And if man can do that, what can God do? Yeah. You ought to just look. Just start walking around your environment and say, look, my God did this. God made those flowers. and My, dad, my, my little financial issue, that ain't nothing compared to making flowers. Oh, come on now. And the Bible says when you look at creation, he said you ought to say Solomon, all his glory, wasn't arrayed like one of these. And if he take care of the sparrow, how much more will he take care of you? There is nothing too hard for God. Get it settled. So the three Hebrew boys had grown, I gotta start wrapping this up here. The three Hebrew boys had grown to be settled in faith like the father of faith, Abraham. Go to Romans 4. It shows that now Abraham didn't start off there, but you got to get to a place through your walk with God and through your experience with God that God's not trying to convince you anymore. That he's not trying to, he don't have to try to impress you anymore. It's settled. Romans 4, 18 through 21, he talked about Abraham. He said, who against hope, believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken. God spoke it, and then he had to keep on believing despite what things look like. And then he said, because God says, so shall your seed be. He took him out and showed him the stars again. He said, if I make the stars... Look, look, I made the stars. I can give you a family. He said, look at them. You, can you count them? If I made the stars, if I made the moon, if I made creation, I can give you a family. I can open up your womb. So shall your seed be. And being not weak in faith, the opposite of weak in faith is what? Strong in faith. So being not weak in faith, he had to become strong in faith. He considered not his own body now dead. That means I don't have the ability, but God has the ability. He considered not his own body. What God's going to do with me, obviously has nothing to do with me since I can't do it. Let me say that again. What God's going to do with me and for me has nothing to do with me since I can't do it. My job in this equation is to believe he will do it. And he will do it for me, and he will do it through me, and I got to get that settled. Being not weak in faith, because sitting on his own body now dead, when he was about 100 years old. Now, a lot of us, we might have made it, and now, all right, I'm 99, God. Now, now, come on now. Next year, I'm 100. Now, if you ain't done it by now. When he was about 100, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not. He staggered not. He loves me. He loves me not. Maybe he will. Maybe he won't. Maybe it's his will. Maybe it's not. He staggered not. He became settled. 
He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Unbelief will keep you wavering. Unbelief will keep you staggering. Unbelief will, will make you have a positive confession one day and a negative confession the next day. You got to get it settled that your confession remains the same even though circumstances change. Say that. Say my confession will remain the same even though circumstances change. Heard a preacher saying on the radio this morning, I just turned from it. He said, stop telling everybody you're blessed and highly favored. You know you ain't blessed and highly favored. You got financial problems. You can't pay your rent. I said, I'm still blessed and highly favored. Click. You got no one to shut people off. I'm blessed and highly favored when I have no money in the bank. I have no money in my pocket. And the reason why that's about to change is because I am blessed and I am highly favored. Stop listening to people understand how faith works. We believe and therefore I speak. Not I see and therefore I speak. Not I experience and then I speak. I believe and I say what I believe. And because I believe it, I say it. And because I say it, I believe it. And because I believe it and say it, I shall see it. If I keep saying it, I'll 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 see it. Keep on saying it until you see it. That's how the God kind of faith works. Stagger not the promise of God. Don't believe he was strong in faith. Remember, he wasn't weak in faith, so it says he was strong in faith. Giving glory to God. Strong faith gives God glory. I didn't say manifestation gives God glory. Just your faith gives God's glory. Hmm. God was getting glory out of Job before he was ever attacked and made it through the test. That's why he recommended him to the devil. Go ahead. I'm already getting glory out of him. I know his heart. I know that he will maintain his integrity. I know he will keep believing me. Now, I ain't sure about his wife, but I know that he is going to stand the test. God was already getting glory. Can I tell you, just by you standing before your manifestation, by you not changing your confession, by you continuing to show up at church when everybody else is scared to come, by the, by the fact that you keep on pushing when everybody else is stopped, by the fact that you keep on tithing when it makes no sense to tithe, God is getting glory through your faith. Somebody shout, God get glory through my faith. Oh my God. Strong faith, strong faith, strong faith, strong faith gives God glory. Strong faith gives God glory. Not manifestation, just my faith alone makes the devil mad. Mr. Do you still maintain your integrity? You still maintain your confession? You still showing up? You still praying? You still believing despite all you're going through? Yes, I still believe God. Ah, let me fuck up. Stag not the promise of God through unbelief. He was strong in faith, giving glory to God, because that's what strong faith does. It gives glory to God. And being, he got to that place fully persuaded, no longer staggering, fully persuaded, here we go, that what he had promised, he was able to perform. That didn't happen after he had a child. That happened before Sarah got pregnant. The reason why Sarah got pregnant, because he got settled that God can do this thing. Some of y'all, the reason why you haven't had manifestation, you haven't got it settled that God can do it. You haven't got it settled that it's not about you, it's about him. You have not got it settled that your job is to believe and, and his job is to perform. My job is to believe, his job is to perform. My job is to believe, his job is to perform. My job is to believe, his job is to perform. And I said my job is to believe and his job is to perform. Uh, then... 
Then they said, Hebrews said, because they said the faith, said, He will deliver. We ain't careful, we ain't scared of you. My God is able to do it. Uh, let me go a little further. He will deliver. Not only he's able to do it, he, he will do it. He will do it. He will move faith beyond the general to the personal. He will is an expression of expectation. He will is a statement of confidence and assurance that God will deliver me. Daniel 3.17 said, he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. He will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. This is the greatest known conqueror in the known world at that time. He's imperialistic. He, 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 he's Russia against the Ukraine. But my God will deliver us out of your hand. You need to know God is a deliverer. Somebody shout God is a deliverer. Second Samuel 22 and 2, David, it says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer. David says in Psalm 34, 19, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth us out of them all. And because they were settled in their faith that God is a deliverer, their expectation was not cut off. My expectation is of him, and it will not be cut off. So we know the conclusion of the story. Daniel 3, 28. Then, after God delivered them, I don't need to go into all that right now. Okay. After God delivered them, then, Daniel 3, 28, then Nebuchadnezzar spake. After he went down there and saw four, it's supposed to be three, four, and the fourth one was the son of God. He said, blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When you come through, God going to get more glory. Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted him. Delivered his servants that what? That's trusted him. And have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. And so I know y'all thought I'm going to end right there. That God was in the fire. We, we know that. But there's something else I want to conclude on. Because the main point of this message today it's not that God delivered them, of what I want to emphasize to you. The main point why I want to get across to you is actually in the statement that they made to Nebuchadnezzar before they went into the fire. And that's Daniel 3, 17 and 18. God will deliver us, but verse 18 says, but if not, we want you to know, O oh king, we will not serve your gods, nor worship the golden image which you have set up. Let me give that to you from two other translations. D Daniel 3.18, New Living Translation, but even if he does it, <laughs> even if he does it, we want to make it clear to you. Listen up. We want to make clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. Message translation says this, if you throw us in the fire, the God we serve can rescue us from your roaring furnace and anything else you might cook up. O oh, king, O oh, king, let's throw the old king in there with all due respect. But even if he does it, it would make a bit of difference. <laughs> oh my God, that's settled faith. Even it would make a bit of difference, O oh King. This message translation: We still wouldn't serve your gods or worship the gold statue you set up. It wouldn't make a Bit of difference. Mother Betty used to say it won't mean a hill of beans. <laughs> it wouldn't make a difference, O king. We still wouldn't serve your gods or worship the golden statue. And so, settled faith goes from he can to he will, but if he doesn't. I can only catch that. He can and he will, but if he doesn't. I think the highest, purest, and most mature faith it's faith that gets it settled that God is good, even if it looks bad. 
I think mature, uh, settled faith says God loves me when I don't feel loved. I think mature faith is saying God has a plan for my life even when I don't understand the plan. That's what David meant when he said he knows the way I take I don't know. Okay? I, I, I don't know, but he knows I'm, I'm, I'm going to follow Siri and then I'm going to tell Siri I like Alexa better. <laughs> I ain't mess with you, Siri. Okay, okay. That you got to know that God is leading you. Mature faith, settled faith says, I may not always understand his ways or his plans, but it's going to be good. Mature faith says, I, I'll serve him unconditionally. Watch this, because he's already done enough. God doesn't have to impress me anymore. He doesn't have to do a dog and pony show for me anymore. I got enough experience with God that if I perish, I perish. But I'm going to see the king. I got enough experience with God to say I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Settle faith says God loves me, period. And I love him, period. Settle faith, y'all, is expressed in this. Let me in this here. Is, is, is expressed in the scripture in Hebrews 11 and 13. These all died. These all died not having received the promises. What? These died not receiving the promise, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them. I don't see it, but I know it. I don't have it, but I have it. I can't touch it, but I've got it. And they embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on earth. Amplified said these people all died controlled and sustained by their faith, but not, but not having received the tangible fulfillment of God's promises, only having seen it and greeted it from a great distance by faith, and all the while acknowledging and confessing that they were strangers and temporary residents and exiles upon faith. We got to do our supersede, right? Okay. Message translation. Each one of these people died not yet having it in hand. What was promised, but still believing. They were settled in faith. And then Paul summed it up by this. Put me in the E flat. I am persuaded that neither death nor life, neither angels nor principalities, Neither powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, or any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Somebody shout, it's settled. I love God. It's settled. I'm going all the way. It's settled that if God be for me, who can be against me? It's settled I'm going all the way with Jesus. It's settled that he is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. No man come to the Father but by him. It's settled that I'm going all the way with Jesus. It's settled if I never get healed. It's settled if I never get the money. It's settled if I never get married. It's settled if I never have a child. It's settled if I never get another house. It's settled that God is a good God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. It's settled I will trust in the Lord until I die. It's settled. It's settled. Do what you want to do, devil. No matter what the trial is, no matter how high the mountain is, no matter how low the valley is, no matter how wide the river is, it's settled that God is a good God. Yes, he is. Somebody shout, it's settled. Settle faith. Settle faith. You know, when you start 
going with somebody and start courting somebody, you got to convince him, you know, I'm, I'm going to take a nice restaurant. I'm going to do this. I ain't going to forget your birthday. Come on, y'all. Some of us, we've gone too far with God. But God still got to have to try to convince you. Get to that place. I am persuaded that nothing I go through can separate me from the love of God. That was in Christ Jesus. So, Father, I thank you for this word today. I declare in Jesus' name that it's settled that you are true, that your word is true, and every man can be a liar. But you are who you said you are. You will do what you said you're going to do. And, Father, help us to have that settled faith like we just read in Hebrews to still embrace the promises that even if we for whatever reason did not receive it on this side we receive it on the other side and no matter what happens we will not compromise our standards we're not going back in Jesus name